Yo. I see my name up in life. Go hard or go home. No slacking in my sector. Just forget about the fortune. Forget about the fame. Speak your truth. And let that be the reason Can they you remember your name. Way. Yo, it's Thursday, and you know what that Yo. means. Welcome to Match Wrestling, episode 422. This is your captain speaking, along with El Jefe, Moses Marquez, or should I say, respectively, your new Max Television and Tag Team Champion and new Max World Champion. Goddamn right. Coming up tonight, the Empire Strikes Back as somehow the evil Emperor Vince McMahon has returned. And the question now is, how soon will the walkouts begin? Jay White has officially turned all elite as he returns home to fucking AEW and we celebrate MJF Day as he goes fucking Broadway. Damn right. Damn right. It was awesome. It was awesome. Can we have MJF Day every week? All the fucking time. <laughs> it was great. Um, before we begin, hit that subscribe button on youtube.com slash Max Wrestling. Follow us on SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you may be listening. And don't forget to visit maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com for all your Max Wrestling needs. So first of all, congratulations again on becoming a uh, world champion for the first time. I mean, I would have liked Chad to bring it home to Dragon Club, but you deserve it. I appreciate it. So um, earlier this week, we announced a new title design was created for you. Do you have anything to say before we reveal the new belt? Uh, if it's as cool as the one I'm going to get, then hey, <laughs> we're in the game, baby. We're in the game. Um, all I know is, is um, let's just say this, Max Wrestling title designs have never let me down. So I am as, uh, I am as uh, shaken with anticipation as, the, as the, all the peoples in the crowd. Well, hopefully we gave ple- uh, people plenty of clues by calling it the Big Mo Gold Belt. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know? MDO for life. <laughs> the outlaw way is the only way. And if you don't get it, it's probably not for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, with that being said, let's jump into this week's headline. Oh, where do we begin? Uh. Well, let, let's keep it funky here. Is it is it the return of Vince that's the giant headline, or is it the sale of the E? I mean, I think they go hand in hand. Like, Dude, it sucks. They bullshitted us all along. Like, he's not really in... I mean, we talked about it at Promo Mania. He's not really in that much control. Or he's, he's not really heavily involved, so now he's like oh, fucking yeah. head of creative... Fucking, yep. And, and, it, and it was because of the Endeavor people. And then they were fucking backstage for night one and was like, hold on, wait a minute. Why are you changing the show so much? This is how we roll, bud. Oh, fuck. Yeah, do, do you not know anything about this place? Um, you, fuck you, you know Endeavor. For be- start as a- fuck you, Ari, whatever the hell the guy's name is. He's the one that insisted Vince to stay on as chairman. Why? He's, he's, oh, Vince McMahon, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he used to. Like, fucking uh, 10 years, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, yeah. I'll give him that at the fucking, at the early, it's about 15 years ago. It, it, he's done. He is done. But here's, it, let's, let's, let's stop with the, with the out of touch and the, and the whole he can't book and all this and that. What the fuck did he go away for? Sexual oh, allegations, just, yeah. The whole paying people off. Oh, you don't want to have sex with me? You're fired. You know what I mean? Oh, you don't. Oh, you don't want to get body slammed by me, baby? You're fired. You know, or you're demoted, whatever. And it's like you just told the world that all that hush money shit is exactly that. Don't worry about it. Vince is going to run your wrestling show, and we're backing him. That's exactly yeah. what you're telling me. That is exactly what you're telling me. And now. I will be the one because I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna preach her later, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start it off right now. If if now if he was a good booker, if this was like Gato or something, you know what I mean? And then all these allegations happened, and he randomly came back. My view of this does not change. My view, I don't give a shit how good of a booker you are or aren't. 
I don't care if you book in my favor or not in my favor, whatever. That's not what this is about. My, what this is about is we had a cancel culture, but two years ago, motherfuckers went boom, bam, and vanished in the thin air as professional wrestlers to be no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We still talk about Marty Scroll and fucking hush tones for crying out loud. And this guy gets to run the company while looking even creepier than ever. As we've dubbed him in the in the fucking TSK, the Cynthia McMahon. He looks like he's Cuban. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna call you Poppy all the time. Come on, Poppy, we're gonna do this over here. We're gonna do this over there. <laughs> You're gonna lose tonight. And they're like, well, excuse me, who the fuck is that guy? That's Vince. No, 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 it's Vicente. They go it's crazy Vicente. for the tongue. They go, hey, hey, hey. They put that fucking thing away, man. They put that thing away. They go, put it away, man. <laughs> the whole thing. You wanna go get some ice cream? He Scar- looks like it though. He looks love like Scarface. It. Oh uh, my god! But even he bullshitted in the whole announcement. They did the interview, um, and they were like, "How involved are you with creative?" And he was like, "Oh well, um, at a higher level, uh, yeah, but in the weeds, no, I can't, I can't do that." Bullshit. Bullshit. Why do you like? Why I don't understand the point of being so goddamn like you have to lie. What do you got to lie for? They, they're gonna back you no matter what. This this is what it is. Like, don't lie. Oh, well, you know, I've been I've been running this fucking game since the fucking eighties, so I know what I'm doing. Say that. We we know you're running it. We did. the booking of Mania, the booking of night two of Mania said everything it had to say. Now, granted, yeah. we're getting the the John Cena vibe right now, which is I'm like, cool, but that was Vince. So again, we're in the Vince. We've never we well, no pause. We we left the, the the Papa H era and now we're in the back in the Vince era. We yeah, had eight it, it decent was, months where guys were willing to watch the E. Now we It was like that transition from night one to night two. Night one was pretty fun. Oh um, yeah. And clearly yeah. Triple H booked it. And Oh fuck yeah. We yeah. we heard rumors that Vince was gonna be heavily involved before it even began but even before night one started i said to the guys i bet you triple h's book night one and triple h's book in night two wait did i say that right I mean, triple yeah. h book night one vince's book in night two well, and, and that's exactly and, how it looked and here was my confirmation for how how i knew uh uh paul did night one was the the, the fucking pwg the gorilla the gorilla on on fucking Sammy and Kevin's gear and every, and my wife is like what in the hell and I'm like don't I'm not crying don't look at me I'm not crying <laughs> I'm like but that's fucking awesome and she's like I don't understand I'm like they started together and they started together in Canada I said but they really came together in a small little company called PWG I said that now technically is owned by AEW I was like and it's it's just a subtle this is where we came from and to me, that's huge because they don't like origins. They don't they don't want to tell you that these guys were independent wrestlers. They didn't want to. I mean, they would love to tell you that AJ Styles was a so many time champion and oh, Brock Lesnar was an IWGP champion and all that other stuff. But when it comes down to like guys like that, they, they don't talk about the indie run. They don't talk yeah. about, oh, they did bingo halls. Oh, they worked for PWG. Oh, they did. This. They'll say, oh, they worked internationally. But yeah, it, like- it, it's deeper than that. When AJ first signed with WWE, I think they like got footage of Impact and Ring of Honor. I'm like, look, this is this is AJ Styles. In case you didn't, in case you didn't know, but when the fuck have they ever mentioned it since? No, I mean besides like the debut, and then the same thing with Nakamura. They don't bring <laughs> that. It's and it's like no. the motherfucker's from Japan. He's from Japan, but it's it, it, it. They use it as a highlight point. We get you. We get the. The smart nerds into it, the smarts or what have you, and then fuck you, it's WWE narrative. Yeah, now he's our guy. Yeah, which, I mean, I, I guess, but don't forget about the history. Right. Come on now. But I, don't know. I mean, I really enjoyed night one. Um, I I was surprised a little bit that the tag title main evented, but not really because we heard rumors about it. Yeah, um, it made more sense though. I mean, it, 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 the way they built it, and and well, at the same time, I thought we were going to have both uh, women's title matches on one night as well. Yeah. So, and I figured, okay, in that instance, there's no way, but it made sense. It made yeah, sense. Yeah, and Rhea still had her moment. I think it was match of the night anyway. Oh, for sure. Um, in terms of wrestling, anyway, I mean, the story was right there in the tag team title match. That's undeniable. Oh yeah, no, no again, we're we're talking wrestling. 
entertainment factor. There, you, there could be a different. There could be multiple matches, matches of the <clears> night. But then again, you know, one is I was entertained by it. Like I was, this is what I was super excited. Maybe the wrestling was as good, but no, Charlotte. Fuck, dude, she puts in her all, and so does Rhea. And god damn, does she does Rhea like take a fucking beating? Yeah. Like Man. night one felt like a WrestleMania. Night two just felt like another Vince pay per view on a grand scale. Yep. Yep. And I hate to say that. Well, I mean, because okay, um, Uncle Dave went on and said, and people were going ape shit for it. Night one felt like a Tokyo Dome. It gave you. The big match feel gave you the huge environment feel. The blah 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 blah. He it, it restored the the uh, the WrestleMania feel for him, and I'm yeah. like, that's perfect. You know, I I agree with that because I kind of felt the same way. I was like, this is something I wanted to watch. Night two, it was like, uh, well, what's left? And you were excited for a couple of matches. And then you were worried about the main event. And I'm like, when was the last time I did this? The last fucking m- network special. And it's like, oh, yeah. That's what this is. And then sure enough, like, again, I got to bring my wife into this. Because, again, when you're like the outsider, it's, it works perfectly. She's like, you would, you seem like you want to be madder. I'm like, I do. But I, I already know what I'm looking at. Like, I understand what this company is. And it's. As much as it made sense to me, this is this is what. It, why am I going to get mad for? I was like, this is why I don't watch. I was like, you know, it, it's time for a direction change. You know, there's no point in having a thousand day champion. Da, 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 da. But then, I mean, obviously, the next day the sale happens and it makes a little bit more sense. And all the stupid rumors are going around that oh, well, Brock's going to be the guy to beat him, and they're going to have some weird interpromotional thing with fucking John Jones and Lester. And I was like, first off, Lester Jones would wipe the goddamn floor with Lesnar okay let's keep that funky he'd wipe the floor with lashley he'd he'd beat everybody he'd beat everybody there isn't a shot so to fucking make that goddamn parody happen is dumb as shit okay let's let let's not do that dumb as shit and what it is is vince is is stuck and this and i think i i think i said this last week this is what vince does when when they don't have a, a in their eyes, the next guy or somebody worth pushing in their eyes, in his eyes, I should say, we have a Bruno San Martino. We get a Bob Backlund. We get a Hulk Hogan. During the eras where there's hot guys and there's people worth giving the belt to, their belt was flippy floppy. You had guys with a 180-day reign, a 220-day reign. Nobody really got a year. Nobody really had a year. You know, fucking Psycho Sid had the belt, for fuck's sake. Then he gave it to The Undertaker, and then it went back to Sean, and then it went to Steve, then it went to The Rock, and then Kane for a fucking day. You know what I mean? Like, it's when the product is hot, you can give people the title and bring garnership to them. When the product is not hot and you don't know what else to do, you ride the one horse until the wheels fall off, and boy, howdy, they're about to fall off. You can't, I mean... Maybe some of these fucking absolute e suckers will fucking love a thousand day rain, a twelve hundred day rain, whatever. But add that with this whole idea of people are gonna say bye bye. Drew McIntyre's already said that he's not re-signing his contract. Uh, the rumor is Bailey is done. She's donezo. You pissed you pissed Seth off by cutting his fucking um, his segment on Raw. That was so the- stupid. You cut L.A. Knight's promo after pitching he was supposed to be the host and having the social media boom of it's not a fuck. Uh, uh, WrestleMania is going to be in L.A. Th- or whatever the fuck his goddamn catchphrase was. I can't remember it right now. But the whole thing was is you everything with momentum with the shit. Everything. Every little fucking thing. And it points to one guy. It points to fucking Vince. And, it, and, and it's it's shit. But again, we're it, it, all in all, they're ha- they have their loyalists, and it's <laughs> disgusting. It is disgusting. They're willing to deal with a guy who's willing who's willing to fire people for not fucking them. Mm. Um, he's gonna pay them off, sell the stock in his company, be brought in as an employee, just to be garner shipped chairmanship by the new owners. What in the fuck, dude? 
and then obviously, obviously there's people defending it. Um, that that Roman won the match. Ah, uh, um, it's hard to defend. Oh yeah, it is. But I mean, it's, it's I can kind of see both sides. Like, okay, we're gonna now get this long term. Cody's definitely getting the belts at some point. Otherwise, why would he? Wait, okay, hold on. If I'm not mistaken, the whole story went another year. Yeah. With John, John had to win the Rumble. So you're telling me Cody's going to be the first guy since I want to say Steve Austin to win the Rumble in back to back years. And then he's going to yeah. main event WrestleMania. So you're going to, so you're, okay, hold on. So Roman's not at 1,000. You're going to add 365 or 360, call it 360 days to that reign. Are you kidding me? All for that one story. Now, now, granted, we had a two-year story in AEW with Hangman Page and Kenny Omega, but that was because it was inner turmoil after they were tag team champions. There was yeah. all this animosity, all because of the outside entities. Not, oh, hey, you didn't beat him this time. We're going to give you the Rocky treatment, which is exactly what it is. We're going to give you the Rocky treatment. You, you, you looked awesome. You deserved to win. But you, you, but you lost because he's the champ. And the next time, oh, you're barely going to squeeze out a win. Or maybe you're going to get some help or some bullshittery. Or maybe fucking Vince says, fuck it, 1,500 A's sounds awesome. Because <clears throat> that's where we're going. At this point, it's like R- Roman is going to be champion. And his kid's going to be in like high school. And he's going to retire. And his kid's going to start wrestling. Yeah, who's to say Vince doesn't change his mind by next year? By next fucking week? By next week! But, um, okay, so if we have to wait till next year, I'm sure it's going to be a big payoff for Cody, but do we really want to see another year of Roman just bodying people and having title defenses, which don't mean shit, because you know he's going to win? And barely being on, you know, barely being on I'm, television, and yeah. your champion being gone all the time. Let's, there's more than There's more than just more burial for 12 more months. Because that's, but first, but yeah, no, you're a million. That's exactly what it'll be. Burial of whatever talent you have, which is exactly why Jay White. Well, I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. He's already beat everybody. Jay White said, no, fuck this shit and went this way. (laughs) He's not going to hang out there to get beaten for no goddamn good reason. I mean, the alternative is SummerSlam, which, okay, it's also a big show. It's one of the big five, four, whatever, but it's still not WrestleMania. It's, it's, thank you. You you ha- again. I, I will continue to go around and around in a circle because it made sense. You had this era's Daniel Bryan, and you fucked it over, which is fine. I mean, we got a good enough, and I'm going to say good enough because I was able to do the pop and everything. There was just enough for me to get over it. So thank you, Papa H. I appreciate you. There was just enough for me to get over it. But you had your this era's Daniel Bryan, and you you gave him the consolation prize. You had the guy. That shocked the world by leaving the company he helped create to go to you to wrestle his ass off, wrestle with a torn pack, the whole nine yards, wins the rumble just to get fed to your to, to your Bruno San Martino. And I you think- wanted and then you want us to remain invested for another year. And the biggest Gut punch really was the booking of the match because it was a great match. There was drama, there was tension, there was unpredictability, there was mm-hmm. near falls, near finishes. And then, first of all, the way the story was built towards it. Then you had the interference from the Usos. Then in comes Kevin and Sammy, and you feel yep. like this is the big fucking revenge. Everybody's saying fuck you to Roman. And then in comes Solo. And the whole thing just, it's like popping a balloon. Well, if I can, if I can, I've always, and this is a line that I've said all the time, and I'm just going to bite me in the ass, my disbelief nonsense. Here's the thing that killed me. The ref threw Solo out. In comes this hooded fellow. The whole thing happens. I understand that. Okay, so, so the hooded, so he hid the whole nine yards. The ref counts one, two, three. Oh, my God, super dramatic. A couple of seconds go by. In slides Solo. Reveals it's him. The ref goes, you son of a bitch. And then leaves. What? You kicked him out. We're in a motherfucking stadium. We're in SoFi. It'll take me 20 minutes to go to the fucking bathroom. 
how the fuck is this son of a bitch already here? <laughs> First off, so you kicked him out. He didn't go to the back because I, I mean, and if he did, he ran all the way back down here. But again, we're in a goddamn stadium. You kicked him out. How? The, what the fuck? You see him right there. You couldn't have been like, hold on, wait, whoa, wait a, wait a, wait a minute, and just I mean, been like, I no, nope, keep it going. Look at look at how <laughs> AEW did tonight. With the tag titles, like, dude, no, 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 no. You guys, what you, you can try to get DQ'd all you want. You're winning or losing tonight. But no, I no also logic. Missed the days when the GM or the commissioner, or whatever, had some balls. Like the next night, Cody's like rematch. I got screwed. Any other generation, the GM would come out and go, "Yep, you got screwed. Rematch tonight. Let's do it." But nah, Roman just says no. There's no on-screen authority figures, and the reality I mean, is, is, do they need one? There's it's Adam Pierce, but what does he actually do when he needs oh, to do okay. something? <laughs> okay, um, huh. call it being the old head. Why is Shawn Michaels running NXT and a nerd we don't know running Raw, or or I guess running the E, the the main roster? How does that make sense? Sean used to be a fucking commissioner during the Attitude Era. He's how did he get dem- How did he get demoted? How did he get? De- if we're gonna play logic here in all this fun world that, that we're in, how the fuck does this motherfucker get demoted? I, I just, I, that's the thing that's killing me. We don't have some legends in the back that can hang out and be fucking G, a, a proper GM. When is when is Regal Sting uh, 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 up? Didn't he officially already sign with the E? Didn't they already give him his role in this whole shit? You can't make him your on-screen authority figure. Isn't it a year he can't be on screen? Okay, then never. I'm gonna shut the hell up. But, <laughs> but that's my whole thing. There's gotta, there's gotta be somebody. If fucking H ain't running the show, run the show. At least have the evil machine behind this. Not just I'm Roman and I do what I want. No, but, at least give me the evil machine. But why is Adam Pearce? Afraid of everybody. The guy is a former fucking ROH world champion. And NWA heavyweight champion. And NWA heavyweight champion. But you because, never know it to look at him. Because, again, it, it's not about... I, I, I don't know. Because they don't give a shit about an authority figure. If they, they don't have any real structure. It's just a, uh, well, we put a guy in charge and whatever. Yeah. It's, there's, it's, there's nobody, like, on screen calling the shots. It's just... Whenever we need to make a match official, we get this guy to announce it. That, that's all Adam Pearce is there for. Well, didn't they do that in the early 90s? Yeah, president. Mm-hmm. Was it Jack Tully or whatever the fuck his name Jack was? Jack Tully, and he didn't take oh, any Tunney. shit. Exactly. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. It was like they went to, like, oh, we got a special announcement, and they would cut to his office. This motherfucker was in his office. He ever came out of his office? It was fucking ball game, baby. It was fucking ball game. You're not fucking with him. You're not fucking with El Presidente. All right. But that was old. But again, if we're doing old school shit, if we have this old school fucking narrative, what are we doing? What are we doing? It's it, it's a skewered narrative. If that's what it is, but nobody yeah. wants to admit it. But night two was just a whole shit fuckery. From, fucking shittery. From, like, the Roman match. Um, WWE are abusers. They just love... Well, Vince era, anyway. Um, mm-hmm. They just love putting the fans through it. Like, how many times are you going to bring up a WrestleMania and just get the fans to go home deflated at the like end of it? a motherfucker. Growing up, WrestleMania used to be the fucking be-all, end-all because the good guys got their moments. Sometimes the bad guys won. But it made sense when the good guys got their moments, like Stone Cold won the title, fucking Triple H won the title from Jericho, mm-hmm. um, Batista, okay, Eddie. Cena, Eddie, Benoit. Like, come on, dude! There was so many good moments. So okay, look, let me and because I'm, I'm night. Let's go night. I'm going to give two examples from night two, and then I'm going to give you three bad examples of night. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, so two of of night one and three real bad ones of night two. So. Right. A good one of night one that nobody thought was going to be any good was Austin Theory and John Cena. If you didn't, if the old heads didn't absolutely love the entrance, 
you absolutely hated Austin Theory at the end of it for being the dickhead that cheated John Cena out of a win. And it, it was the perfect heel move. You gave the kid heat back when he's been dying for some fucking heat. Um, and in another great one, I fucking love Seth Rollins, okay? I don't give a <laughs> shit. Um, I hate his clothes, but that shit was fucking awesome. Logan Paul is is beyond is beyond good for a kid who has no business being in this business. And I hope he's here for a little bit longer. He's entertaining. He knows yeah. how to garner heat. He knows how to work a fucking crowd for crying out loud. You know, uh, that whole thing was awesome. But night two, Brock Lesnar and Omos. Nobody gave a shit going in. You didn't give a crap. There was no heat. There was no, I mean, there was the smallest of builds. It was absolute dog ass. Uh, the women's showcase fatal four a whatever the fuck it was literally a hodgepodge of fucking teams thrown together and the snoop, snoop dog versus the miz <laughs> wasn't supposed to fucking happen so i have the, okay, i gotta tell this whole fucking story so it's it's supposed to be shane who's supposed to come out he does a leapfrog tears his fucking quad no questions asked. Tears his fucking quad, and I, being the being the the hopeful and the and the the guy hoping that people got bigger brains than I think they do, and I'm thinking maybe fucking Snoop Dogg is such a good worker, maybe he learned something in AEW or whatever that he's got to go out there. I'm gonna go hit the Miz, and I'm gonna turn this into a match, and I'm gonna beat the Miz. No, it's some fucking nerd on the goddamn camera. Put the Miz, punch him, go punch him. Like, fuck, fuck you guys. But I mean, you had to act on spot. Uh, I love it just looked, dog for that, though. Yeah, it, it, it was awesome. Thanks for beating his ass. <laughs> I appreciate you. But it was just like it was. Uh, Snoop Dogg was the, the only thing that saved that entire segment. Like he even when saved he said most the, match, the show. Bring the bill. Start the ref. Get a referee in here. Let's go. He he fucking saved most of the show. The only good match prior to that was the triple threat. And because only because they beat the living dog piss yeah. out of each other. I mean, knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, why Oscar lost? I have no idea. No, I was going to mention that too. Um, there is no way in hell Bianca should have won because now they've put her in a position where the fans are going to start to turn on her because number one, Oscar should have won. Number two, she is outstaying this reign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love Bianca. I think she's great, but that was time to drop the title. And she, they, there was no reason for her to win when Asuka was brought back with this whole new gimmick. You know, she was repackaged in the Rumble. She went on this tear of everybody. She's crazier than she used to be. And she just gets beat. You built a whole new character to lose. You let her go all the way back to Japan. And take that character to lose. Again, I, this is not a hate on Bianca. But when the when it's hot, you move it. When it's not, you, it's where we're at. And it's and, and Bianca's she's popular, she's lovable, everybody likes her, but it doesn't mean that she's garnered enough attention to be your women's champion anymore. Because she's She's officially now hitting the Charlotte, uh, the Charlotte kind of shit where she's going to beat everybody. And it's like, well, fucking somebody beat her. We're going to have to get a call up for somebody to beat her. It should have been Oscar. It could have been an easy, oh, well, fucking go back to your regular Oscar form or whatever. And I'll beat your ass. Or it could have turned into a dumb story out of that or something, anything. But you just, you, you built this up to, to squash it. And she beat kind of like. Yeah. She beat Connor Light. I like that. I mean, I, I get it. She's a role model for girls and everything. But... Hey, so was Why? the Ultimate Warrior, and he was on fucking Coke. <laughs> so, I mean, Coke and roids, baby. But no, seriously. This is going to make fans turn on her. Mm-hmm. You've put her in that shit position where, where Cena was when he was winning all the time, and everybody loved Cena, and then all of a sudden it's like... Fuck, I'm sick of Cena winning. I'm sick of Cena. When, when is Super Cena going to go away? No matter how much in merchandise sale he made. We got Roman's getting that now. Roman's getting it now. 
you know, but 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 I think he's still in the honeymoon era where there's still people that are fucking just grasp. He's also lucky him. he's a heel. That's true. That is that. Uh, you know what? That is the giant factor that I didn't bring up right there. Is he is the the big difference is anybody can stick behind a heel a lot easier than the guy that he won't stop fucking smiling and he never gives up. And it doesn't matter if you get pissed off them because you're supposed to get pissed off at him. Mm-hmm. Because he's the bad guy. But this, I think this is also Asuka's fifth straight loss at WrestleMania. She's 0-5. It, it, explain that to me, Papa H, or Vince, or whoever. It's gotta Why be is Asuka 0-5? I'm sorry, it's, it's got to be Vince. My bad, H, my bad. It's got to be Vince. It's got to be. Because I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Now, because I've got to ask this. Since, since it's obviously two, two different people on this bitch. If if the SmackDown and the Raw Women's Championship were flip flopped, do you think Charlotte would still hang around? Do you think Charlotte would have retained and and Oscar would have won? If 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 H was if H was booking it, would Bianca be still be the champ? No, no. I think I he knows to strike when the iron's hot too. He understands. Like where does? I mean, obviously, I think they're setting up some sort of stupid unification with uh, Bianca and Rhea from what we saw the next night, but... That's fine. If that means Rhea beats her, then fine, but I I, don't, I just think Asuka should have won that match. Again, um, agreed. As far as the Hell in the Cell match goes, I can't really criticize it. It was a decent match. Um, only thing it's I'm pissed off about was where the fuck was the brood? Yeah, dude, come we on. We were promised Christian, for fuck's sake. Christian was given the okay. We heard fucking Gangrel had signed on. I was waiting for the whole fucking shit. I was like, let's go. Finally, the brood. Uh, and he's the mirror man. And I'm like, the fuck is this shit? And then to make the funniest part about it is you could see later on, um, like, uh, fucking Beth Phoenix is backstage. Like, on t- it was, I think I saw it yeah. on TikTok. She's all backstage, all fucking grooving with the mask and shit. I'm like, see, that was, the, that was cool. What the fuck? Your entrance was not cool. And then it ch- and then it changed. I guy like fucking. Yeah, I hate when they do that. Edge needs to make his mind up on which gimmick he's using for his entrance. Seriously, bro. Like, are you this like I'm from hell Edge guy who's on the verge of the brood, but I'm not in the brood? And then now I'm a oh, disco ball. The, and then disco ball, and then hit the fucking what's it called? Goddamn, what was it Ultra Bridge? I don't yeah, know that, Metal Ingus. There you go, Metal Ingus. Like, fuck, man. Uh, and, a, hell, obviously a nasty gash for Balor. <laughs> Jeez. That thing Split was... Split the fucking whoa. head open. I think it was a good, like, fucking three inches, man. It was huge. Yeah. That was like, nasty. Price they pay, man. The price they pay. Um, And that's pretty much it for Mania. But the next night, like you said, Bailey's pretty much on her way out. I don't understand... Well, obviously, we don't know why she was cut from the next night, but, like, she was just completely out of the show when all she really had to do was accompany Coda and EO to the ring. So why was she cut? How did you not have time to have her in the corner of a fucking tag team? Because she doesn't have the look anymore, Cap. That's why. Because that's what it is. Old man is back. Now we're about the look. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. And you just know Coda and EO are just going to become this generic tag team that Vince don't give a shit about, and they're going to be broken up within three months? I would say four, but yeah, I'll go three. And then one of them's probably going to get released. Yep. I can already see Shotzi getting released sometime soon. Uh, yeah. Fucking, no, Chelsea Green will hang out. But yeah, no, Shotzi ain't going to hang out for much longer. I can already tell that. This, that's right. that's the problem with this this fucking place, dude. It, it, or at least with Vince in control, is it's going to become about the appeal now. It's not about garnering viewership. It is about how do we look good for the viewer, motherfucker. We don't care about looking good for the viewer. Like we like Otis for crying out loud. He's fat. Like what is? I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't like what we can't just like what we like. There can't be different varieties of life. We got to be vanilla and chocolate. It's todo. No, right? No. I I also never want to hear anybody give Tony Khan shit for a huge announcement again because Triple H was going to make this huge announcement on Raw to kick the show off, and it was literally, we're still we're not going anywhere. 
Enjoy the show. What the bullshit? You're you're going somewhere (laughs) to the fucking catering section, Jack. You're going somewhere. Fuck. Yeah, maybe he's right. WWE's going nowhere. Yeah, fast, they are. Fast. They're going nowhere fast. Um, gotta say too, I I really enjoyed Ray and Dom, and oh I I thought that would be the gracious. end of it. But then, as soon as Dom attacked the next night, it took me like a couple of seconds to realize why. Because obviously, Bad Bunny's at ringside. Mm-hmm. Next show is in Puerto Rico. Here comes Damian Priest. They're obviously setting up a tag match. Beautiful. Um, let's do it. Do, do it. Love and Ray's uh, fucking was a newly inspired Muda mask. But basically, yeah. it's padded. If anybody's curious, like what the fuck's going on, it's padded. It's a Hollywood that's mask. All, that's that's all you need to know. It's motherfucking padded. You know what I mean? It, it, it just looks better. It's more protective. They old as shit. Speaking of masks, I I actually really like the look of Dom's like heel entrance, like oh the police god. escort and the mask. He actually looked pretty badass. Oh my god! Talk. I mean, again, if I were talking about getting people's attention. My wife came up to me and she says, you already knew about this, right? I said, yeah, they were tag champs. I told you about it. And she's like, but you never told me they were going to wrestle each other. I said, oh, my bad. And she wanted to watch the whole bitch. So she watched the whole thing. And she was like, what's, she's like, what's the point of the entrance? I was like, he went to jail for a day. And she just laughed her ass off. And I was like, so, you know, he had to get his superpowers back. So he had to go back to jail. Um, and then I got little caught, little little caught up, if you will, a little uh, thrown back with the uh, with Eddie's theme when Ray came out, oh. and immediately I was like, "That was Eddie's theme," and she's just like, "I said he paid a lot. Him and Conan paid a lot of homage to Eddie at the Hall of Fame." I was like, "So I was hoping maybe he'd come out to the whole thing." I was like, "But you know, he's got to he's got to play his music." I was like, "But it's cool." You know what I mean? It was it was the whole thing was awesome. It was it was a spectacle. Father versus yeah. son. The celebration of, of, you know, of even the third of the third party, if you will, the the, the custody of Ray Mysterio or of Dominic Mysterio has come full circle at WrestleMania 39. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eddie was very, very uh, present in that match. It was awesome. Fuck, it was awesome. Uh, so, but, 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 where the fuck do we go now? Uh, we, went, we, we went from that high on night one to fucking here we go again. And I hate to say it, but Punk was right. As long as Vince is still breathing, shit's not going to change. Eight months. In eight months, the speculation or the 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 the, uh, the amount of people willing to watch the E that don't watch the E was up. The mm-hmm. viewership was up. The involvement was up. It was it was just up. And now it's gonna fucking just <clears throat> it's gonna flatline and then it's gonna decline. And it, it's if anybody else ran it, it's gonna succeed. It's gonna succeed. So yeah, no, he's gotta. Unfortunately, and I hate saying it like this, but he, my old man gotta die. He gotta die because everybody wants him in charge because he knows the he knows the business. Yeah, but everyone except the actual audience, the fans, don't want him in charge. Even even hardcore WWE fans that have. Had their eyes opened by Papa Rachel the last eight months have been like, nah, actually, we don't want Vince back. Exactly. They got a taste of the new product. They got a taste of why we liked NXT more than the E. And then when NXT changed, we're like, oh, God, no. What yeah, but I'm, I'm considering sliding back into NXT's DMs, to be honest with you. Uh, that's I did getting check better. it out this week. Yeah, no, there was a, what was there, a uh, stand and deliver? Yeah. Okay, so that show, actually, I enjoyed that show a lot. I thought, uh, I really enjoyed the main, Car- Carmelo Hayes has been impressive. Like, this kid has been on my watch radar for a minute, and I'm, I, you know me, I'm a Steiner guy, so Braun Breaker's a dude that I, I, I pay attention to, but the passing of the torch was necessary. Seeing Braun turn heel the other day was interesting. Yeah. But, I mean, I, 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 it means they don't have to call him up. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> there, there was no call ups on Monday, well, there, and thank God. There, what, is, what is there? For, what is there for them to do? That's that's the overall issue in question right now. What would be them? What would be there for them to do? Get jobbed right. out. And I think this is like the third straight year of an absolute dog shit Raw after Mania. It used to be the oh. best Raw of the year. The last it couple of years, it has been so bad. 
absolutely There's been no terrible. surprises. Nothing exciting. Nope. It's just a dull three hours of my life that I will not get back. I want to say it was thirty less than about thirty minutes of wrestling at best, and way too much talking. Way too much talking. Mm-hmm. A bunch of recaps, the whole everything. Um, I mean, I'll do another quick mention about NXT too before we move on. Um, Indy finally getting her time as yes. women's champion, although they they did make her look a little bit like a deer in the headlights on uh, Tuesday. Oh, I didn't. I gotta watch. Oh no, she was great on on stand and deliver, and then on Tuesday on the following NXT, she just looked a little nervous, and then out comes Zoe Stark, um, and like they they obviously agreed to a match later on, but still, Zoe's just like in her face and everything, and it's, that's your women's champion. She's supposed to be, you know, and then in comes Cora Jade at the end uh, with a big return, just attacks Indy, which man, he or Cora Jade is something else. Oh, you're telling me. I can only imagine. I mean, I liked I liked her as a face, so I can only imagine her as a heel. No, I mean, um, I can understand in Indy being all hella timid. I mean But yeah, no, I mean you're you're champ now, girl. You gotta have some goddamn confidence. I mean, yes, I understand Dexter help you win, but still. That's just cause that's love, baby. It's just love. Yeah, that that was done really well. Yes, it was. Um but yeah, I mean I'll probably be checking out a little bit more NXT now. And uh I do not give a shit about SmackDown tomorrow. Boy, no, I don't either. Um, all right, then. Where are we up to? Before we continue with what's happened this week, let's go back a little further in time. This week in wrestling history. Yeah, baby. And luckily, I've already recorded it. Awesome sauce. Um, and the last bit I mentioned was WrestleMania 21 and how banger of a card it was, and we just don't get WrestleMania like that anymore. Fuck, no, we don't. It was Ray and Eddie, first money in the bank, Taker and Randy, Sean and Jericho, Cena won the title, Batista won the title. And I miss the good old days. Mm. All right, on to this uh, guest wrestler in three, two, one. You just can't. You just you just can't forget about the good old days. But now let's have some good old fashioned fun, and let's see if you can get there before I do. And let uh, if I can't guess the identity of this mystery opponent in two minutes, I'm cutting a sixty second promo on this son of a gun. It is time to guess the wrestler. I wonder who this could possibly be. Who is it? Who the hell is it? Guess the wrestler. He's the bestler. Better than all the wrestler. Three, two, one. Uh, Three time NWA Mid America Heavyweight Champion. Two time AWA South Southern Heavyweight Champion. Um, So we're going way back. Mm -hmm. We got NWA Gulf Coast Tag Team Champion. Um, we got a USWA Unified World Heavyweight Champion. Then we move on to the big stuff. A four-time WCW World Champion. Oh, no. Okay. Never mind. That's not him. My first guess was going to be Kerry Von Eric, but no. Nope. Uh, four-time WCW Champion? Who the fuck? Hulk Hogan? No. Um, Thank God. Was a World Champion in WWE as well, though, two times. Uh, let's get some PWI awards. Um, comeback of the year, 95. Feud of the year, 97. Match of the year, 1987. Most hated wrestler of the year, 1989. But was most popular wrestler of the year, the year before. Macho Man. Damn. Let's go. Oh, yeah, it's Macho Man. I figured, I was like, it's going to be the <laughs> Macho King, because everybody hated the Macho King. Uh, yeah, I think that last bit gave it away. He's the only other uh, guy I could truly think of that was a multi-time, a multi-time WWF champion and a multi-time WCW champion. Because the only yeah. other dude I can think of in that instance, I want to say Sid, but I think Sid only won WWF title once. Yeah. And the only other guy would be, no, because Brett only won the WC title once. So he's the only, to my knowledge, he is the only guy with multiple title reigns, him and Hogan. Yeah, um, I think 
that last bit would have given it away to me because obviously, was it Flair in 88? Uh, either. And then obviously the Mega Powers Is exploded the following year. Steamboat. Steamboat was 87 because that was the match of the year. So then, yeah, it had to be Flair. Uh, yeah, so then he goes from that to the following year. The Mega Powers explode. So obviously he's the most hated wrestler of the year. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, what else did he have? He was wrestler of the year, 88. Mm-hmm. That sounds goddamn right. 92, most unimproved. Damn, Dave. How in the... Damn, that's just <laughs> mean. But he was tag... Okay. I was like, my, when the tag ones was... It threw me off. But when you said AWA, my brain yeah. went fucking scatter mode. And I was like, uh... Obviously, obviously I couldn't say who he was tag team champion with. Because oh, yeah. it was Lanny Poffo. Oh, well, yeah. That would have <laughs> mad giving it away. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cap and Mo Show. Still no uh, 60 second promo for you this week, but we're here every single Thursday. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, wherever it is you may be joining us, and head to the website, maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com. Damn right, that's right. Still to come this week, we got Gig of the Week, Best of the Week, and Shit Marks Say, You Sons of Bitches Don't Stop, Do You? Oi, oi, oi. You're telling me. Um, but thank you all for making Promo Mania 8 such a success last week. Um, indeed, it was an event of epic proportions. We got like 50-something K on the second night. Um, nice. Next event coming your way is Full House. That's right. It comes your way May 25th as we predict AEW's Double or Nothing. It's the first max event created just for an AEW pay-per-view. Go to maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com forward slash Full House for more information. Hell yeah, and you want more information, then more information you shall have. Um, I said I had a huge announcement. We're getting a reality show. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) But for real, here's the huge announcement. Yeah, they tell you that you should quit trying. You are too small and you are too young. They tell you the chance is too slim, the world is too big, but you say how come? I'm ready to light a new fire, raise a new flag across a new sea, and if I'm never the one in your way, then put your head down and run right through me. This is one half of your first ever tag team champions and your new television champion speaking another promo mania is in the books and while i'm disappointed that dragon club didn't take all the gold i must congratulate moses marquez on finally winning the world championship after two years now we'll get to the television title in just a minute but first i want to talk about the tag team championships what does it mean for max wrestling to have tag team champions it means quite simply that two people can team up to win these titles by any means necessary whether that be promo or trivia now i once said i didn't create titles on this show so that i could win them myself but i got a taste for gold and i like to think that i earned the right to compete So, Phoenix and I would like to make it clear that we are defending champions. Therefore, we issue an open challenge for a two-on-two trivia battle for these titles at Full House. 
And just to show my gratitude for sharing the stage with me last week, I would like for one of those challengers to be Daniel Crimmins. So please accept the challenge, find a partner, and meet us on May 25th. And now for the TV title. I don't exactly feel good about running in and winning this championship at the 11th hour. I, for one, was looking forward to DC versus the Demoness. And I just want to make things clear, Dan. You were not bumped to night one. I was. If I wanted the spotlight, I would have shared that main event spot with you on night two. But since you left us no choice but to change the match, I figured it was only fair to give Moses that opportunity to main event night two. But hell, who's complaining? Night one got more views on YouTube anyway. But I'm getting carried away, so. <sighs> Here's what I really want to say. <clears throat> I find it amusing that two of the very people that were upset with the way promos used to be were the ones last week saying that they miss how promos used to be. Because why did we deactivate the promo championship? Why did we cancel all those promo tournaments? Because I didn't like what he said about me, or I don't agree with that decision, or they got screwed. We changed the game because of schoolyard bullshit like that. Which you complained about. But hey, I'm with you. I miss old school promos sometimes too. Which is why I announced TV rules for this championship. And as such, I'll play along with you. This summer, I'm announcing the return of the King of the Mic tournament. All under TV rules. And the winner gets a shot at this TV Championship at Promo Slam. Now whether the TV title is still over my shoulder or not remains to be seen, because I'm just going to say two things to end this announcement. Full House. Ted P. De Niro. Yeah, buddy. Full House coming your way. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait for King of the Mic. Are you kidding me, dude? King of the Mic is literally made and made so many competitors and broke so many competitors. We've had big time feuds. We've had people come out of fucking nowhere. But, and I do mean but, this is not for the faint of heart. This is literally, as you stated in your fucking announcement, we changed the regime because of the backlash. So, if you're coming at King of the Mic, and you better come ready, because motherfuckers are not holding back. We, I, you know what? I, you know what? And 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 I, did, and I should have talked about this before we got back onto this real fast. With the King of the Mic, we need to incorporate some kind of like code of honor. I mean, there is rules to abide. Like I said, it's going to be TV rules, which is the new stipulations for the TV title. Um, so there's going to be no judges. There's going to be no vote. So you've got nobody to blame if it doesn't go your way. Um, it's the closest to five minutes gets the win either under or over. Um, no gimmicks, no camera cuts, no special effects, just you and a camera. That's it. Make it happen. Uh, all right then. So, uh, in other news, we've covered pretty much all of WWE's Vince drama um, and AEW kicked off with a bang. I said during the week, now is the time for AEW to get back into fifth gear. They've been in the crawler lane for a couple of months, but mm -hmm. I mean, they, they did kick it off with a bang. Um, within like a couple of minutes of the show, kicking off on Wednesday night, in comes Switchblade, who everybody said was going to WWE. Hell, we thought he was too. I'm not even going to fucking well, lie about it. We considered it. Well, again, when Papa H is running things, many things are possible. When he's yeah. not. They're all impossible. So I'm glad he has officially signed slash returned to AEW. The Bullet Club is still a thing, apparently. I don't know how the fuck that's going to work, but hey, I'm not going to disagree Bullet with it. Bullet Club is omnipresent. I'm, you know what? And I'm going to say this, and, 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 and all you fucking nerds out there that hate the elite are going to say are going to already talk shit. I'm not going to be surprised when the Bullet Club is as big as it's ever been in America, and you guys are just like. Oh God, we're gonna go buy my bullet club shirt. Every last one of you motherfuckers will. I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. 
<clears throat> if this is the rejuvenation of Bullet Club, then more power to it. Absolutely. <clears throat> Um, and it's great to see Juice like being so serious and taken as a, such a credible threat. Fucking, I love Juice's new character where he's just rock hard, and I'm just like, you're the, he's he went from he went from being the dude in NXT that had a sign and he kind of did okay in matches, and you were like, eh, whatever, and maybe you thought mm. he'd be like a weird disco inferno. Got his gets his ass kicked by uh, Kevin Owens, gets a little more recognizable. Leaves the company, goes to Japan, remakes his entire character, gets over as a huge baby face, wins U.S. title the whole nine yards, starts doing indies, gets even more popular, goes kind of heel, joins Bullet Club, full circle. This guy is a main event star now. Yeah. So is Jay White. So are the elite. A.K.A. the Bullet Club is main event stars. And I lead it in AEW ASAP. And along the way, Juice broke a fucking metatarsal. Of course he did. Of course he did. That's a broken metatarsal. Is that what that is? This guy fucking showed up in a day, broke a hand. Get Mm. the fuck out of here. And still cut a badass promo. That's called efficiency. Yeah, that's still one of my favorite promos of the last few years. Um, But yeah, so we're going to see... Uh, hopefully a lot more Jay White in AW because we only really got a taste of him when he was like flip flopping in between. Um, yeah, we got the one match at Forbidden Door. That was it. I think he's still got some unfinished business with Adam Cole. For sure. For so sure. things should heat up now that he's officially official All Elite. Um, oh yeah, I'm sure he's gonna have some beef with Kenny. I'm sure he's gonna have some beef with. There's gonna be some cats. There's gonna be some mm-hmm. wrestling matches, and it's gonna be All Elite. Um, I'm not going to turn into AEW diehard mode just because WWE was terrible. I mean, this oh, was a great show. There was a couple of flaws. Like, I don't understand what the fuck was going on with the acclaimed in JAS. That just came out of nowhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was like they came out. Ex- it was it was almost as if they'd already made the offer and we were supposed to know about it. For the acclaim to join the JAS, it just seems so random. Oh, no, um, it was, uh, was it last, was it on Dynamite? It was either Dynamite or Rampage last week. They, they took, um, uh, they, what the fuck? They took, uh, goddamn, uh, the, the acclaimed out for like ice cream or something. No, for dinner. And they fucking or, or, over ordered and all this shit. And he's like, don't worry about it, son. The Jericho appreciates society. <laughs> and they the whole fucking shenine and they're just like they're all excited and this and that and they think they're gonna fucking sign and I'm like I'm loving this story by the way because it's it's just like um they're playing it up just like fucking uh the the uh, was it uh Alex Reynolds and John Silver used to do it in the Dark Order they didn't yeah. know how to take no for an answer so they're like. Oh, we're this close to him. We're going to go buy him dinner, and he'll be here. I'll, I promise, Mr. Brody, he's going to be a part of the Dark Order. And it's a super similar vibe, and I'm all fucking for it. I'm this all is, for it. This is why they need to show highlights from Rampage. Dude, I've been, we've been saying that for Ra- months. Yeah. Just I need highlights like this from This happened Ram- on Friday, so that, that explains why this is going to happen. You guys show me fucking highlights from Dark. So what the fuck? You can't show me highlights from Rampage? I can't get some highlights from BTE? Come on. Interject everything. Interject at, it all. Come on. At the moment, there's like there's no link between Dynamite and Rampage. If you miss one, you don't know what's going on on the other. You're not lying unless you read spoilers. And like when, before the brand split and everything, when Raw and SmackDown were just two shows that shared the roster and people were on both shows, um, they explained what, what happened on the other show. They would show highlights. Yeah. Or they'd show a full fucking recap sometimes. That'd be nice. But there's nothing like that with AEW. Um, I wish I had an excuse for them. I don't. But yeah, no, they, they really need to. They really need to do it. You need to start interjecting. Give me highlights. Let me know what's going on in your other shows. Give me a reason to go watch those other shows. And Damn, also, what a concept. Also, it's probably a good thing. But um, Max obviously resisted the temptation to rap on Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, if he had, the, the nerds probably would have been like, oh, yeah, of course he mentioned WWE. But, oh, uh, yeah, that, you know he that's how they're going to be. 
Oh, he would have ripped him a new one. Are you kidding me? Like I said, I think it, you think it's bad. We call him Vicente McMahon. It probably would have been way worse. Um, but we got a couple of title defenses too. So House of Black, obviously, Help. still trios champions over the best friends. Uh, and we got Sue. to see Sue. Sue in the minivan, baby. <laughs> Um, I'm, this was just pretty basic. House of Black just blazing beat, through them. Beat that ass. Um, but there was a lot of good chemistry. There was yeah. a fun, entertaining match. And uh, for you nerds out there who were like, where the hell did they get all this chemistry from? Um, Chikara and PWG. There you go. Also, Malachi Black is just hell of a talent. <laughs> They're all hell of a talent. Are you kidding me? Every last... I'm... I'm okay. So now, mind you, I'm I'm, I'm a Chuck Taylor fan because of PWG. OC has should have taken the world by storm two times over, and if he hasn't yet, you're not watching him enough, and that's not my problem. That's yours. Um, and Trent is just—I have a soft spot for Trent. You know what I mean? He was he was the dude that was supposed to be the guy that beat Kenny Omega, and he could always get so close. But I've always I've always enjoyed Trent Brenner's career. So I'm like I love that trio, but it's like you got fucking. You got one of the hotter trios in the game right now. You fucking, you got Kenny Omega Light and goddamn fucking Buddy Murphy or Buddy Matthews. You got Malachi, who is, who literally should be another guy on the verge of the title picture, but I get his role right now. I totally yeah. get his role right now. And within due time, I hope he gets in a higher status. I don't need him there today, though. And I'm not complaining that he's not there. Oh, and yeah. Like you when have, he first came in and killed Cody. Oh yeah, murder the motherfucker, and um, and then you got to give credit where it's due. Dude, Brody King is the fucking man for like a three hundred plus pound dude. Yeah. He is smooth as glass, smooth as glass. That guy. I like it when a big guy can just outperform gravity. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I love it. Um. Then we had the women's title match: Jamie Hayter defeating Riho. But they really went hard to make Riho look good and look like a credible you, challenger. Ooh, you stop talking shit on Riho. Stop it right now. Stop it. Are you kidding me? God damn, this was good. Don't get me wrong. Jamie Hayter is, is one of the better in-ring champions we've had in a minute. Mm -hmm. But And everybody loves her. But it, but but if you don't see why motherfuckers love Riho and why she was the first AEW Women's Champion, you ain't watching her. She's too good. Now, granted, yes, she is itty bitty and can get thrown around like nothing. But think about that. She is as small as a child and out there getting beat to shit by fucking Jamie and not giving up, taking Rainmaker after Rainmaker and still kicking out. Like, come on, it's called heart, baby, and she's got all of it. I'll be honest, it was a couple of times I actually thought she was going to win. Me too. I was like, oh no, oh no, she's like, oh, okay. But I mean, it, 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 I wouldn't have hated the decision. I just think, Jamie, again, we have the hot hand. You cannot, yeah. everybody loves Jamie. Everybody loves Jamie Hayter. She's also got one of the hottest fucking themes there is, boy, I tell you what. Yeah, she's, I, she's so likable. Um, really, it's, it's no surprise really that they just naturally turned face. I don't think it was planned. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to say it was. It just. It was one of. It was. We helped it happen. We, it was. It was because yeah. of us. And they said, "Fuck it, we're rolling with it." And they did. And it's perfect. It's perfect. I kind of like how Britt Baker's taking a backseat too. Like originally, when Jamie was going going for the title and she became champion, we were like, "Ah, Britt's gonna turn on her." But the more I see them together, mm -hmm. the more I think, "No, nah, Britt's just supporting her." It's, good. it's 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 G. I think she said in the pressure that it's her time and I'm going to let her shine and yeah. I'm all for it. I mean, maybe if there is a match between them later on down the line, that's cool. But I'm loving where her position is. Her barely wrestling is perfectly fine with me. The reality is, is she is the one where you are willing to wait months and months and months and months for her to wrestle, because when she does, it's going to be a banger. Mm. And I'm going to I can't wait for it. Um, but yeah, like she really dug deep at the end there to hit that final nail in the coffin, that final rainmaker. That thing murdered poor little fucking Rio, <laughs> man. Oi. Um, then we came to MJF Day, and I just gotta say, fuck Mrs. Benedict. That's right. Um fuck her. the whole segment was great. If you if you didn't enjoy that segment, then you don't get MJF. Hold 
if you don't get that segment, you don't. Hey, oh, fucking world class podcast here, buddy. <laughs> world class, <laughs> motherfucker. All right, but again, if you don't get, they don't get MJF. That's the problem. Yeah. If you don't, if you, you don't get pro wrestling if you don't get MJF right now. This guy last week, and this is how I want to explain this shit. Last week, you hated his guts. The crowd hated his guts. You what you would have burned, you would have beat his ass in the parking lot, kind of hate. This week, he, they show a fucking video package that would have been on the news. It shows this guy like Hulk Hogan in the 80s. Take your vitamins, kid. Motherfuckers are in love with him. Because in the crowd, he's fucking beloved. They're fucking foaming at the mouth at everything he says, and he can. Long Island, New York, every single one of them motherfuckers. There's dudes saying New York in the bathroom. Like it was fucking amazing the flip flop trade. The and yeah. it's, he's just he's everything that is pro wrestling right now. And it has nothing to do with him wrestling. But then again, and I've said this time and time again, there was a guy that did this all the time and didn't wrestle as much when he was too busy showboating. And he's a 16-time world champion and one and known as one of the greatest wrestlers of all fucking time. He is this kid is Rick fucking Flair, dude. He is Rick, he is our era's Rick Flair in its holiest of forms. Oh, we I, I used to say the same thing about Okada, but Okada, maybe in Japan he could talk as good as Flair. But in America, ain't nobody touching MJF. Now and, and you're right. MJF in Long Island is basically any Canadian in Canada. You can boot him any other week of the year, but if they're in Long Island, that guy's a hero. The biggest hero. He is he is Superman and Adam Sandler at the same time. <laughs> um so man, the swing number was very reminiscent of uh the segment with Jericho. But we we knew MJF could sing. Oh hell yeah, he can. I was fucking jiving. And a, Jesus, can he tell a story? He is just the way he sticks up for fucking mental health. I swear to God. Yeah. How are you we supposed to hate you? How in the hell are we supposed to hate you? And you're over here, Mrs. Benedict, making fun of my AD or my ADD. I think there was a an ADD chance. Oh, that's right. There was an ADD channel. I was just like, are you kidding me? Uh, he's on. I'm just talking to all the. This is my favorite line. He's on. I'm just talking to all the people here in New Jersey. I don't talk to the poor's and I'm just dying. I'm like, bro, you talk to everybody every week. You're lying sack of shit. Oh, this is great. Um, and he's just to man. stop it off, Jungle Boy deliberately <laughs> fucking up the, the band cue. So okay. MGF gets in his face. Turns I thought around. The, I thought the dude on the saxophone. Or whatever, uh, when he was going with like the whole number, I was like, I swear to God, I was like, this guy's gonna hit him with the saxophone, or MJF's gonna beat his ass. No, didn't happen. I was like, oh, okay, cool, thank God. Oh, but, I love uh, the scat, the scat piece. The shit was that the was best. Great. But yeah, no, it, fucking Jungle Boy, perfectly, perfectly played, perfectly done. This is this is gonna be awesome. And dude, seeing Sammy with that belt in his hand, are you kidding me? I, I, that looks good to me. That looks right to me for some weird and reason. Like if they, if MJF's done soon, then I could see Sammy being next. Yeah. And his, his promo after his match, which, which, which is also great with commander. Um, oh again, if he'd have cut that promo anywhere except long Island, it probably would have got some good pops. Cause he took oh, some got a huge really pop. decent shots at MJF. But again, that's the thing. You're you're ta- you're taking shots at the hometown boy, so of course you're going to get some heat, and it's fine. But the the reality is, is they gave him some mic time, and he shined with it. He had yeah. match time with Commander, and he shined with it. This match screamed Triple A, and I loved every second of it. It's great shit. Yeah, pretty much everything Sammy said was babyface, but obviously he ain't quite a babyface. Give him time; um, it'll come around. Yeah, and he, he had some great points. Um, other people built that pillar for MJF. That, in in the ring, anyway. Motherfuckers don't... don't Did you not remember that Wardlow was a part of his staff for a minute? What happened to the Pinnacle? The Pinnacle could have been great. Wasn't Sammy a part of the it. Pinnacle? 
Oh no, yeah. that was when he was trying to get into the no the whole that's when he was part trying oh, yeah, to get that, into the he was setting inner circle. But no, MJ, it was MJF, uh, Sean Spears, and FTR, and they could have been a great faction, but it just it went, it died, it disappeared. Should have been a great faction. Should have been. And yet, Tully. Oi, how, how you fuck up a fucking uh, goddamn uh, team with Tully managing you? <laughs> with Come FTR on. too. Jeez. But anyway, MJF survived. FTR is doing great. I don't know what the hell is going on with Sean Spears. I was about to say he is sitting in a chair somewhere. <laughs> Um, but I, I am really looking forward to this eventual Fatal 4-Way, which I don't doubt MJF's going to win, but it's going to be a hell of a match either way. I think it's gonna, I, I think that's probably what will end up happening. He'll probably end up winning, but everybody is going to get a very close near fall. Oh, yeah, and they're all going to come out looking like shining stars. Beautiful stuff. I can't wait. A um, couple of quick things later on. Uh, Matt Hardy turns on Ethan Page. Meh. All right, whatever. Okay, I'm good for you. I still don't like you, but good for you. <laughs> you you helped Hook win, but he didn't need the help. Exactly. Well, uh, him. It, it, my whole point is Isaiah Cassidy. You you get him uh, being a face again. Good, uh, good. Now go away. Even Hook didn't give a shit. No, Hook didn't give a shit about nobody, <laughs> except maybe fucking uh, Dan Housen. Yeah. Um, Nigel McGuinness comes in, which was pretty quiet. Really, Dave. It was just like, hey, here's Nigel McGuinness. Wait, what? Um, okay, hold on, hold on. So he came back during the Ring of Honor pay per view. I don't know if you saw the Super oh, Card yeah. of Honor show. Okay. So um, I, I took vid. I did not take like good enough video. I didn't vlog or anything. I should have vlogged. It would have been way better that way. But um, so we're we're watching the Ring of Honor show. Uh, we're live. It's it's me, Harold, his wife, and Rob. We're literally all in different places. So I and I and I looked to both like the sides of me and I'm like, hey, dude, if I'm animated too much at all, just let me know. I'll fucking try to do my best to tone it down. The guys left of me laughed. The guys right of me are like, well, did it, and we just started fucking yakking it up. And I'm like, this is what I love about <laughs> wrestling shows, man. I swear to God, this is my people. And as the show is getting ready to start. Tony Khan comes out and he's all oh, you're going to make an announcement on Wednesday. Thanks for coming out. I'm like, Sounds anybody like understand? <laughs> Um, but any, anybody understand what the fuck he said? And like, like I trust me, I tried to copy it. I really did. And then it got real quiet, and they were just like, "All right, introduce our special guest announcer." And I'm just like, "This could be fucking Nigel, isn't it?" And bam, we fucking erupted in that bitch. We erupted for Nigel because it's I'm he's home. He's yeah. home. You know what I mean? Ring of Honor was his home, and I, and I had to educate the people around me. What the fuck did he do there? And I'm like, I'm glad that you brought that up. I said, he, I said, you guys ever remember, did you, did you hear about the, the headbutt Shibata gave Okada? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> excuse me. He used to do that to Brian Danielson all the time. What? I was like, yeah, like early Ring of Honor, 2003, 2004. I said, they used to headbutt the dog shit out of each other. I said, you should go check him out. He was a gruesome wrestler. And so I know I got a lot of people on that. Uh, I hope he's a constant commentator. Yeah. Or I'd like for him to be on the team because he was excellent in the Ring of Honor show. I yes, I did buy it and watch it, even though I was in the crowd. Have to listen to the commentary. Then no, yeah, I I love McGinnis's commentary. Um, or if if he's there to like do interviews or make announcements like that, then great. Um, mm-hmm. so the big announcement was of course that AEW is not just touring London or doing a dynamite or whatever; they're doing all in, and it's going to yeah. be in Wembley fucking stadium now. I'm still salty that they're only doing London, <laughs> but Wembley Stadium is huge. There's okay, so there is a twenty-five thousand seat stadium somewhere over in the UK. I don't remember where. Something it starts with a C. I can't remember what. Uh, um, Uncle Dave was talking about it this morning, and apparently that was the original idea. Is is um, they were going to run a show in uh, in the UK? It was, a, it was like a twenty-five five. Seating it starts with it's something crow. Oh, Craven Cottage. Thank you. Craven so that, Cottage that's, or whatever. Uh, Where? Fulham's ground. So that would have been Tony TK's ground, basically. Oh, okay. Well, originally that was the uh, I, original idea of it was they were going to do it there, but I guess they're going to just say fuck it and they're going to Wembley. And I guess Wembley got rebuilt since the last time oh, yeah. uh, the E was there. So now they can fit more. Hell yeah. Closer to 90,000. And now, with that being said, first off, I have to make the immediate joke. Are, are we get, 
are we going to have all out or all in before all out? Or are we going to be all out then all in? Um, who was it? It's confusing. Confirmed it. Somebody confirmed it on the roster. Um, oh, it's Bowens, Anthony Bowens. Somebody just randomly asked him, so is does it is this replacing all out? And Bowen said, no, this is all in. The next week or the next night, probably next week, is all out. Okay. Well, so there's like a week gonna, apart. It is going to be brutal. So, um, with all that being said, though, here here's the thing, and 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 you bring it up beautifully. It, it's in London, and so it it's going to be it's it's not exactly. I wouldn't. I don't know. Would you call it the central of the of of, of England? No, <laughs> no, not exactly. at all. It's right down in the south. Exactly. So it's a pain in the ass. So, <laughs> I mean, ninety thousand seems like a lot. And if you don't get at least like seventy five thousand in that bitch, it's going to be a failure in a little bit of a way. And I'm thinking to myself, you have to have the most stacked motherfucking card anybody has seen in a minute. Yeah. For that to get sold out. And that immediately makes me think that, like, you got to have, like, a, a fucking Kenny and Okada or a Kenny and Koda or, uh, like, a Mox and Tanahashi or not a Mox and Tanahashi, like a, like a Mox and a Naito or you have to have some very big ass stars. So it might be a nice little promotional thing. Maybe guys from Impact, maybe some AAA motherfuckers, maybe some, or not AAA, you know, maybe some Impact cats, maybe some New Japan guys, maybe some uh, DDT guys. You're going to have to figure something out to garner huge names to want to to garner 90,000 ticket sales. Because it's huge. This is a huge thing. and it's And it ain't too far away, dude. And that's the thing that's killing me. It's not too far away. You know, that's... That, <laughs> you got to make some motherfucking <laughs> matches, boy. You know what I mean? You got to make some serious matches. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if that's going to be doable. Nah, and that's what makes man. me worry. But yeah, this, this is a different stadium from when WWE were there. So they tore it down in, I want to say, early 2000s and rebuilt it completely. Yeah. Um, I think the record in the original stadium was like 120,000, and it's oh, bigger yeah. now. Uh, well, when did they go in SummerSlam? Oh, yeah, 92. Okay. Long time ago. So, uh, we say it's like a 90,000 seat stadium. Right, the, according to Wikipedia, the attendance in that one was 80,355. Yeah. So on average, if you don't at least make 80, it's a failure. Well, I mean, like for, for football games, they get like 80, 90,000 in there. That's, That's without player. the floor seats. But That's, wait, who, who plays at Wembley? Is that man? Is that Manchester? You it's nobody's like home turf. Okay. They play like big games there. So like cup finals. Oh, okay. Well, so then, yeah, well, then there you go. It's cup final. Of course, it's going to get like a hundred fucking like goddamn thousand people. Y'all fucking sell out goddamn football stadiums for shit times like, like, the, like, uh, fucking, like, toitum. Uh, what are you thinking, toitum? Shit. What are you thinking, shit? Toitum. Ed Sheeran got a hundred thousand people in there. See what I mean? <laughs> That's Ed Sheeran. Yeah, if Ed Sheeran can do it, fuck. Again, you make the right card and. Build it and they will come. Build the mm. right card and they will come. Shit, sounds like a job for the TSK. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be pricey as hell, so I'm not even going to entertain the idea. But I, I, I appreciate how huge this is now. It's not just, oh, AEW's coming to the UK. It's, fuck, they're going for Wembley. What's pricey for you? They, you they are literally me. going what? all in. You tell me what's pricey for you. If you had to sit in the nosebleeds, what's the most you're paying? Understand? I oh. understand you got to travel. I understand all that other shit. Yeah. Say you got to sit in the nosebleeds. What are you paying? What's the most you're trying to pay? I don't know, like eighty. Okay, I, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. The reason why I bring that up is because um, I found out the day of. If you went to SoFi Stadium the day of, they had tickets available in the top. For as low as about uh, seventy five dollars to sit up on top for Mania, but again, yeah, for WrestleMania. Now, mind yeah. you, hold on, hold the phone, hold the phone. If I'm not mistaken, and I need somebody to confirm this, they were charging a hundred dollars for parking. 
a hundred dollars. I think those nosebleeds are also a lot further back than they are at Wembley too, so you can still pretty much get a decent view in the nosebleeds at oh, Wembley. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no. Our our American football stadiums go up, and yours guys, I think, go out. Yeah. So you still got a decent view, even if you're right at the back. Mm-hmm. Man, I fucking knew we need that. That's what I need. I don't want to do this. I want to kind of like, hey, all right. Motherfucker. Oh, man. Can't wait to see the card. Um, so coming up to the end of the show, BCC just murder some jobbers. Like what straight happened? up kill them. Don't even what say their names. What happened to the Blackpool wrestling jerks? Huh? 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 What, what TK, you heard me? Are they, right. are they officially changing their name to the Barbaric Combat Club now? That would be cool, because, I mean, it sounds... I think barbaric. that's what Brian said, but I don't know if it's, like, their new official name, because obviously Blackpool doesn't really mean anything without Regal. That's true. That is true. I could, I could like the I could like Barbaric Combat Club. That sounds badass. I feel sorry for the, all those people who bought Blackpool Combat Club hoodies. Right? So. <laughs> Fuck your logo. I'm sorry. Chad. <clears throat> Goddamn Chad, you ruined it. Um, but even worse than just killing some jobbers, D. Bry literally commits GBH on Hangman. Oh yeah, dude! Wow, like Jeez. literally takes a screwdriver to the dude's eye. Obviously not at like, stage, but well, yeah, but still, I was like, he, he, he gives the illusion that he's doing it. So in in storyline terms, he's just dug a screwdriver into the man's eye. Mm hmm. Oh. Got the jitters <laughs> just thinking about it. shit. But where the fuck was Dark Order? Where was the elite? I mean, granted, I know they're everybody. hurt. Everybody. Either everybody's hurt from the ass beating of the BCC or Hangman really does not have any friends. Or, and I, I kind of like this idea, the BCC, they've been killing everybody for weeks now. Literally, people are afraid to get in the ring with them. I like that. I like that because that makes them even more scary. Which means, like, you, you don't need them to have built because they're just scary. Yeah. Even Wheeler looks dangerous. <laughs> oh, he's little, hella little, dangerous. That and even shit. Brian called him a little shit. <laughs> he's all, yeah, even he's a little shit and he's dangerous. I'm like, well, yeah. But well, I love him. him. Oh, yeah, but I love <laughs> him. I love the little shit. <laughs> I damn I love Brian. <laughs> he's the best. Uh, I think this is what BCC needed, just a, like a killer mean streak. Um, yeah. They're still popular as hell, even though they're heels. They needed uh, something new once uh, Regal went away, and this is yeah. this is going to work perfectly. And also, it's confirmation that they're not breaking up. Nope, thank God. And clearly, we're going to blood and guts. Fine by me. But it's going to what is it going to be? Hangman and the Elite, or Hangman and the Dark Order? I mean, it's got to be the Elite after what happened last week. I would hope so. Um, like. We came to the main events, and once we knew about Vince and everything, all worry about FCR leaving and going to WWE was gone. There was no gone. chance they were leaving, so they had to win the match. Um, oh and there were, I think there was one or two moments where I thought, shit, obviously they're not leaving, but they're going to lose, and then it's going to go in some kind of storyline. But now, FTR, two-time champs, got a huge pop. Um, I loved... Every bit of this. The guns were good. The, I gotta give them the credit. Fuck, oh my god, were are you kidding me? Like, first off, I mean, I, I, I know you're probably not uh, totally hip on the hip hops, but so the song they came out to was "Many Men" by Fifty Cent. Yeah, I, and, I googled it. <laughs> okay, so the <laughs> idea behind that song is is while he was doing his shit back in the day, there was a bunch of dudes that wanted his head, and there was a head out on the street and. It was right after he got shot nine times. So that was this whole thing. It's like, there's so many dudes that want to kill you, yet I can't die. And so that was the whole emphasis. It's like, dude, she, you can't kill us. And I'm like, oh, I fucking love the guns. Are you kidding me? It was the perfect entrance. They're, they're the fucking biggest piece of shit fucking heels there is. And they're in all fucking white. They've got this spotlight entrance. Fucking, that was nice. Uh, it was just, it was perfect, in my opinion. Perfect. Um, I'm loving this ref, by the way, who's like, oh, low blow, I'm going to ring the bell. Like, no, no, fuck that shit. Keep going. Get your ass back at the ring. And then he, there was the, there was the belt shot and Dax kicked out. Then there was the other nut shot. And the ref's like, I'm going to ring the bell. And Cash's like, fuck you are basically tackled his ass. And it was just drama filled. 
It was drama filled. It's I've always said this about FTR matches. Everything about them feels old school. I feel like I'm watching the Brain Busters. I feel like I'm watching uh, the Midnight Express, you know, the Rock and Roll Express. I'm watching 80s wrestling. Mm. And it was picture perfect in this one. The ref refuses to throw the match out because it needs to be won. FTR ends up doing the deed. Granted, I I knew they were going to be around as soon as they fucking got a new shirt. But, hey, I'm glad that they're for real hanging out. Good for them. Where do they? I don't want to say where do they go from here, but hopefully they just keep going up from here. Yeah, and the pop they got—it felt like the first uh, uh, they'd won the title for the first time. And I think, wait a minute, no, they're they're two, they're two time champs. Two time. Love it though. I love it. Great way to end the show. Uh, like we said, oh, it, yeah. it it was a solid show. There was a couple of things that were a little eh, okay, yeah. but I mean, I think they nailed it last night mostly. Oh yeah, people on TikTok are over here saying fun stuff like that was this was one of the best uh dynamites of the year and I can I can agree it was up there. It was definitely up there. It was very very mm-hmm. good. And yeah, it does help that the uh, Raw was absolutely terrible. So TK, more of this. Yep, keep it happening, Jack. Pencil neck geek, gritty freak, scum sucking beard with a lousy proceed. He's a one man no cut losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. Pencil neck geek. Uh, I, so I think uh, it's safe to say TK's not this week's geek. No, he, he he gets off easy this week, even though he blinked all of three times during his fucking two and a half second promo or two and a half minute promo. But um, no, for this week's <laughs> geek of the week, we've got oh my god, do we got one? That is a gigantic, uh, fun story. So I don't know if you heard. Unfortunately, we're going to have to take a little bit of a serious tone for this one. But um, as a parent, I'm a, oh, a yeah. little disgusted about this. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I'm going to pronounce her name incorrectly. I already know I am. Um, let's just go with one of Eddie Guerrero's daughters. So that way I'm not like, that way you guys can go do your own goddamn research. Um <laughs> Shawl was her ring name, right? Well, no, Shawl is the is the older sister. This is the one oh. that was, yeah. There, it I is didn't even know he had the two younger daughters. sister. Yeah, he had two daughters. So this happened to the younger sister, and I can't oh, get her shit. name right now. Um, so basically, what had happened was she had talked about, or not, uh, she had went on. I want to say TikTok. Uh, Sherilyn, Sherilyn Guerrero. Right. Thank you. So she had went on TikTok and pretty much said that, um, or she talked about how her stepdad. I forgot his name, um, had, um, had sexually assaulted her, you know, that this happened on a cruise ship and apparently it happened on the first Jericho cruise and immediately, you know, she got immediate sympathy cause this is ridiculous. You know, this is not, this is slowly becoming a normal thing and it's getting gross. And I hate saying that it's becoming a normal thing, but you know, she, she speaks her mind. People are backing her up and immediately within the day or so within an hour, a couple of hours, her mom, Vicky Guerrero, is immediately siding with her husband. You know, oh, that wouldn't happen. This wouldn't happen. Da 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 da. And it turned, and now it's already starting to snowball. You know, mom blocks daughter on all forms of social media, takes down the post, talking about how she defends her husband the whole nine yards. And then that's when Sal Guerrero, uh, the one that we saw in NXT for a little bit, and she actually uh, did some uh, ring announcing for Lucha Underground. She jumps on, I want to say, Instagram and put up a fun little story pretty much saying how this wasn't rape. It wasn't a true sexual assault, but the sexual relationship between them did happen and how she pretty much is blaming the entire family for letting this thing happen. And a.k.a. you guys blame yourselves for the situation you put yourself in. So a.k.a. This week's Geek of the Week, and unfortunately I have to say it, even though we just praised the shit out of Eddie and we had the whole moments about Eddie, it's the Guerrero family. I, I don't understand how, how a mom can be okay with anything like this, of any concept, of any being. Whether it w- ended up being a consensual thing, a non-consensual thing, whether it was S.A. or not S.A. I don't want to say the whole assault thing too many times. Um, regardless, this your child is number one. Whether an adult, whether they're not an adult, whatever. That is your number one. 
you should never, ever, 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 ever side with the person you married over the person you created. You know what I mean? That is blood. You married this motherfucker. It just, it, it irks me. It hurts me on the inside to think that this poor girl had to go through something like this and thinking that she would have some, some backup from her family and she's not getting it. Her sister is saying that this thing happened, but she's blaming, she's giving her blame. So it's like, the reality is, is I'm sure that there is still a lot of questions to be answered. There's a lot still out there, but as a parent, I'm upset that Vicky is it more for her kids. This should be about your kids. This should not be about slandering the fuck out of each other. This should be coming together to, to sympathize, to, uh, to reconcile, to whatever, to comfort Sherlyn Guerrero, not Basher. And unfortunately, this is what we're going through. And it's bullshit. Uh, I'm, I'm not calling her Guerrero anymore. She, she can be Vicky Benson for all I care. <sighs> yeah. Was it, it was Chris Benson? That's the motherfucking yeah. name, Chris Benson. And I'm like, who the most sound fucking famous as shit? That guy. Um, oh, fortunately, man. we did hear from Chavo, who came um, to Sherilyn's defense. Good. Okay. Good. I was waiting for Chavo to say something. Uh, is... Oh, you didn't see the tweet. He pretty much just said no. he fully supports her, um, and has done for privately for the last couple of years. Um, she's a very strong woman for coming forward. And I love you, Prima. Yeah. It means niece. But yeah, it's it is it's fucking it sucks, dude. This sucks. It sucks. God, I, I hope I hope this gets situated. I hope this doesn't tear this part family apart any further than it than it already has, but this is just bad right now. This is just all fucking bad. And yeah, I I've, I've only just seen Vicky's um response on instagram too and it's just like oh the cars the apartments that they bailed out of and the surgeries and who gives a shit about any of that yeah so so when when does when does your child have a price tag oh i overpaid for you you should get over it what no i'll gladly grow broke for my kids dead ass because that's what i'm here for i'm here to ensure they succeed in life that's Nah, you got it backwards, girl. Uh, for once, I agree with cancel culture. Mm-hmm. Get to work, bro. Um, all right, let's bring the mood back up with the bestler of the week. Come on. Uh, kind of goes without saying. Uh, this week's best of the week is from WrestleMania Night One, the Good Night. Um, <laughs> I kind of knew this stood a chance of being a match of the night. Um, I, I've been saying for a couple of years how Bianca Belair has match of the weekend, and did so for like two years in a row at WrestleMania when she was against um, Sasha, and when she was against Becky last year. Mm-hmm. Didn't happen this year. No, sir. Um, but thankfully, I think the women did have match of the night again. So for how gritty the match was and how mm-hmm. like it really made you feel like they were digging down deep. And she in particular was digging down deep. And finally getting that redemption. Best of the week goes to Rhea Ripley. Yeah. She Good for you, girl. It, man. Hell yeah. And she you know what? I even got to give praise to Charlotte. She, not just for the match, but like after the match, she was like, she deserves it. Try respectful. Like, Finally, we're seeing a selfless Charlotte Flair. What a shock. I love it. <laughs> Keep it coming, homie. Yeah, uh, And now, um, I don't know if it's going to include Vicky again, but for stupid shit people say online, this is shit Mark say. God damn it. Stay off of the simple media. OMG! Eggplant emoji. WTF! Santa Claus emoji. Thought he was dead, LOL. Peach emoji. Shit marks sick. Names have been changed to protect their stupidity. Okay, so, um, no, I'm gonna leave Vicky Guerrero alone. This is fine. I'm not gonna jump on her shit from more of it. I already gave her enough crap. Um, and I'm sure she's gonna get more from the masses. So I've done my due dilly. But as far as um, fun stuff, um, 
Well, first off, uh, the uh, Roman lovers are all over TikTok saying, oh, we told you so. Um, all the Cody Rhodes people that are pissed off are playing WWE 2K and beating the dog shit out of Roman with everything they could find. And I can't say I blame them. And then um, there's been some... There's been some dumbasses that have been that have got on uh, TikTok, and luckily for them, I haven't caught their video, but I did catch one of the more popular TikTokers shut them down. As I st- I was talking about earlier on, um, the the heat that Vince is getting for coming back, the whole you know like oh what are you doing back and this and that, and the majority of per- per- let me stop myself, the majority of wrestling fans are upset about that because of his booking. And I stated plain and simple, I don't give a shit if he was fucking Gato. You can't be, uh, I'm going to, you know, you're going to get fired for not touching my wiener kind of guy and me want to fucking follow your company. It's just not going to happen. And she uh, emphasized it beautifully. And that she is wheezy blonde. And I hope she doesn't stop doing this TikTok thing soon because she's killing the game. And she has all kinds of other stuff. So make sure to check out wheezy blonde. She's the girl. Um, But she's a thousand percent right. She's a thousand percent right. Uh, the same people that are out there like, oh, he's disgusting and he's this and he's that. The ones that are willing to flip flop that are all about the booking. If he was a good booker, you'd be backing him up right now. You'd be the Joey Ryan fan base. You'd be, oh, well, it's a dick flip. It's a part of his gimmick. And you'd be the whole shebang. You know, you'd be the opposite of cancel culture right now. But the reality is, is unless you're counting this in a black and white scenario, which I am, and it has nothing to do with his booking again. He could have booked the shit out of Mania. He could have been the he could have been the guy that was actually booking for fucking eight months. But when you have these allegations that are true, you had hush money to prove it, and everything in between that you got brought back as an employee to be bumped back up to the, as a chairman. It what like what are we doing? Like what? Like that's again, it, it, and, I, and I continuously emphasize like what is the point of all this shit? It's you're we're gonna. We're going to praise this guy because, well, we love this company. But look at what he's fucking done, man. Look at what he's done. So, Wheezy Blonde, I'm 100% behind you. My comment was simply preach because that's exactly what needs to be done. Fuck him for what he did, not for his fucking booking. Fuck him for his booking, too, though. Yeah, that, too. <laughs> um, And... I, I, you know, I don't even have anyone for Twitter. I'm not even going to bother. It's just Enzo. It, same subject, really. Enzo Amore licking Vince's ass all week. Desperate for a fucking phone call. Yeah, that's, well, you know. When you When you get fired by MLW because you suck, what the fuck else do you want him to do? Could not be more obvious if you just tweeted out, Hey, Ben, sign me back. How you doing? Yeah, it, that would have worked out better. Huh. I would have got hired. But uh, shut up, Enzo. Yeah, shut your ass up. Uh, they are marks, and that's the shit they say. Hey, you got two doses last week, so leave me alone. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> we came at you hot and heavy, goddammit. Okay, no 60-second promo again this week. Um, better luck next week, but I, I guess it's my turn next week. So uh, thank you for spending your Thursday with us. Before we go anywhere, here's what Moses has for you pencil neck geeks this week for the A to B of Retro re Wind. right retro rewind is uh is still coming it's still in the works <clears throat> we have it's, i think i have three episodes in the editing form those are going to drop uh when those drop um hopefully we'll have some more to keep it going the decision to do impact has been put on hold we're going to stick with retro for right now but um there might be some other stuff coming we did have an idea of doing a whole forbidden door booking thing i've decided Maybe it's time to spin it. Since we're going to have to fi- figure out how to get 90,000 motherfuckers in Wembley Stadium, maybe the TSK is going to figure out how to book the perfect show to get 90,000 motherfuckers in that bitch. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But other than that, that's about it right now. Um, I did get asked if Bolt Rant's coming back because the draft is all but a couple of weeks away. And the answer is, I don't know. So... <laughs> If it does, it will end up being on the on the uh, on the Click Talk Network, and we'll see where it goes from there. But until then, just pay attention for the retros because they were coming. Yeah, and like you said, remember K- K- KTN is reactive at ktnetwork.weebly.com right now. 
Fucking A right. But speaking of not only that place, you can check out all the fun social medias. You can check us out on the evil Twitter machine, Max Wrestling UK, at the Captain 512 and at SMR Podnet. And of course, check out the lovely Max Wrestling website, maxwrestling.weebly or maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com. Do not forget to hit that subscribe, that follow button, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and of course, YouTube. 500 is a goal. 1,000 is when we can start going live. And that's our overall goal. So help us get there and share it with your friends because you know you yeah. want them. Do it. Sharon's caring. Do it. And with that said, join us next week on oh, Thursday the 13th. Ooh. Doesn't usually mean bad luck, but it could for somebody. Hey, you never know. You've been watching the Cap and Mo. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Lost, Chad. <laughs>